I never saw a wild thing sorry for itself. A small bird will drop frozen dead from a bough without ever having felt sorry for itself. I heard that poem when I was um, 13. It's uh, by D. H. Lawrence. I saw that I heard the poem in, in a movie, and for a 13-year-old, I don't know why it stuck with me, um, but it did. And I think I connected with that that sentiment of dignity and never feeling sorry for myself. If we skip a few years, um, I was born able-bodied. I was uh, healthy, young. I was a bit crazy. I, I had an accident when I was, um, I think I was 12, where I, I, I fell off the balcony and I broke my hip. When I broke my hip, um, I had to use crutches for a, a while, for a short period. And I don't know why. I, I truly don't know why. But I said, next time, I'm going to use a wheelchair. I said that to myself. I'm like, I'm, next time, if something happens to me, I'll be using a wheelchair. And that came out of nowhere. And a few years later, um, I had a car accident. So roughly five years. And I ended up in a wheelchair. But the thing about that is, even before I had that accident, I saw a friend's accident. And I said, interesting. I don't know why. And this is the first time I'm ever going to say it. But I saw my friend's accident. He showed me pictures of his accident. I said, I think I'm going to have an accident. Why did I say those things to myself? I have no idea. But these are the type of words I think that create us. When you truly believe in something and you say it, I believe there are ways that we manifest things that we don't quite know. Those words stuck with me in that poem. When I, was, when I had my accident, when I was laying in bed, I never felt sorry for myself. When I felt like I lost everything, I didn't feel sorry for myself. And it came back to me and it kept coming back to me. The reality which we live in is different for everyone here. Everyone's reality is quite different. This is, it's a Sufi story, but also it's been attributed to other um, societies, but it's the story of the elephant, where a village of blind people go out to meet an elephant and see what an elephant is. So one person sees the elephant and says, he's tall and powerful. Another one sees an elephant and says, oh, he's soft and fluffy. Another sees, says he's, uh, he's mushy and soft. And now this says he's thin. Everyone saw it from their own perspective. We all see our reality from a different perspective. My story is quite different. But I think what we all have in common is the power of words and the way it shapes us. I think a lot of people um, got to know me through um, one of the things I did last year, which was a Guinness World Record. I crossed Qatar from north to south, and it took me a day and 17 hours. I created that. I created it in my mind. I created it in my story, in my self-talk. Sports has always been a microchasm. It's always been a smaller version of this world which we live in. The ability to say, I'm going to do something, set a goal, work, work towards it, is such a powerful and empowering thing. When I came to plan that 200K, um, for some reason, this is the first time I did it, was I saw myself standing at the finish line, standing at my goal, and having achieved it. And then I went and said, okay, how do I go and actually create that? How is it that I stand there at that goal, at that finish line, having achieved one of the biggest accomplishments of my life? And from there, I wrote my own story. What is it I need to do? What is it I need to accomplish? What are the things that I need to actually provide to create that outcome. And I think we can replicate that quite easily in our own lives. When we want to write our own story, when we want to say, listen, I want to enjoy my life. I have these goals that I believe are truly worth achieving, things that I want to do, things I want to achieve. And then you can leave things in between because the unexpected things, I can, it adds the spice to life. It makes life a little bit better. We all have a journey, I think, um, enjoying that journey, but also being aware of how we write our own stories, being aware of what we say to ourselves, 
if I could go back and change anything, I think I would never tell my th myself those small things that I would call our micro negative moments, that self doubt or that negative feeling. Because I don't know why I said in those moments, but it, it came into fruition. And I think we all should be aware of the power of our words and how it shapes our lives. And just as powerful they are in that terms, how powerful it can be in creating the positivity on all our lives. Um, I wanted to part with um, words which stuck with me and they were just as powerful as the poem which I read in the beginning. Um, it's by uh, Radard Kipling. It's a poem called If. If you, can if you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blame it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but allow for their doubting too, if you can wait and not be tired by waiting, or being hated, or being lied about, don't deal in lies, or being hated, don't give ways to hating, and yet don't look too good, nor talk too wise. If you can dream, and not make dreams your master. If you can think and, make, and not make thoughts your aim. If you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same. If you can bear the truth you've spoken, twist it by knaves and make traps for fools. I'll watch things that you gave your life to, broken and stoop and build it up with worn out tools. If you can make one heap of all your winnings, and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss, and lose and start again at your beginnings, and never breathe, and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone, and so hold on when there is nothing in you except for the will to hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings, nor lose the common touch, if neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you, but none too much, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds of worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that is in it, and which is more, you'll be a man, my son, our woman. I think those, um, those words will echo in all our lives and in your lives, and I'm looking forward to hearing all your stories one day, inshallah. Thank you.